Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending Saturday, March 23rd. First up, this is from Bugs Platt TV. If you remember in a couple of TDD reports ago, both him and I put together a review of a shoulder harness camera stabilizer unit. Well, now he put together a little bit longer video where he talks about some modifications he made to it. And I won't spoil it, I'll put the link down below. All the links will be down below in the description. But just to say, it came out a lot better than I even expected. So um, it encourages me to do a little bit longer review of that same shoulder harness mount myself and using it as a walk-along where I'm like walking dogs or walking along the sidewalk and using it because it turned out even better than expected. So if you get a chance, check out his link for the shoulder harness mount and how he's using it on his motorcycle. Um, next up, this is from Gamer Glow. I got this right as it was happening um, on Friday, March 22nd, around 8 p.m. I think this is 8 p.m. Eastern time they were talking about. Um, Glow actually, Gamer Glow actually contacted me as this meteor was streaking across the sky along the East Coast. People in Baltimore were seeing it, people in Boston, and people in New York were seeing it. Um, even as far west, where it started out tracking, people spotted it in Ohio. So, um, the tracks from the eyewitnesses, they believe it entered the atmosphere somewhere over central or western Pennsylvania and then tracked right towards New York City. So it was visible by a lot of people. They called it a bolide, but technically if you don't have an eyewitness that hears the sound, it's not really a bolide, but it was a flashing meteor. It probably, if it did splash down, it probably splashed down somewhere in the ocean the way it was tracking, but it was probably about a meter across, so not quite as large as the one that happened in Russia, but still... Um, it's kind of weird how these are happening now and, and becoming a little bit more prevalent. Now they say uh, it's just prevalent as far as the views. They say they happen at about the same rate and they happen pretty commonly, but it's just people spotting them. I guess because of the fact we're uh, three quarters of our surface area is ocean. A lot of these uh, bolides and flashing meteors and stuff like that happen with nobody able to witness it. But if you get a chance, check this one. And my link for this one is from earthsky.org and they do actually have a map of the tracking and you'll get to see a video of a security camera actually uh, taking a video of this streaking across the sky. This next one's from 1954 Shadow. Thank you for sending this one in. This guy takes a quadcopter and he builds a Faraday cage around this and you gotta be kinda careful with these things because a Faraday cage you gotta get it just right but if you do get a Faraday cage just right it will protect you from lightning strikes from high voltage because if you know anything about electricity, it always goes along the surface of metal. The electricity actually doesn't go deep down into a metal. For example, a wire, when you've got current passing along a wire, there's very little or no voltage towards the center of the conductor. It all rides on the outside. Well, this guy decided to risk a quadcopter of his, build a Faraday cage around it, and then have some Tesla coil strike it. And I mean, these are pretty large Tesla coils, so I think it's getting hit with like a million volts and some pretty neat effects of the lightning bolts hitting it and it's uh, basically I'll, I'll let you see it I won't, I won't give it away but uh, uh, it'll you'll see the quality of this guy built the Faraday cage for doing this and uh, to risk a, a quadcopter like that I think even the inexpensive ones still run four or five hundred bucks so this guy's got quite a lot of guts to try this but it makes for a very interesting video this one's uh, next from uh, Navy Thomas 8 gave me this link here there was a lawyer named Jerry Jones that had a nuclear stress test. I guess they give you some kind of isotope and then they measure the stress test. Well, it does leave some residual radiation. And it's kind of interesting because this guy was taking the train. He got on the train, I guess it was around, or, or was at the Ogilvy Station when they stopped the train. They have these detectors. I don't know if you know, since 2004 and the Italian bombing the train station, they have supposedly put around these, uh, in major cities, they put these radiation detectors that supposedly can track isotopes. They're trying to see if anybody is sneaking a nuclear device or a dirty bomb or something like that aboard mass transit or carrying it around. They say even in various places of the city they should be able to track it if somebody's driving around a van with some type of a, a nuclear device or something like that. Well, the uh, team called the Viper team from TSA responded to this and started going through trains at the Ogilvy station and they passed this guy up a few times and then came back and started talking to the guy sitting next to him and as soon as they said the word isotope, this guy Jerry Jones raised his hand and he said, uh, yeah, I just uh, had undergone an, um, a nuclear stress test. So they were able to determine and he would uh, had evidence from his doctor that that's what he had just did. So it didn't end up being, being anything but basically just a test of the system. And that kind of surprised me too because I wondered if those little detectors around the major cities were really worthwhile spending it for tax dollars and if they really would be effective at all. But if they could actually alert a team that a guy that had a little bit of radiation from his body from a medical stress test would alert a team to respond 
um, maybe the technology is really improving at a good enough rate to help us out. And last up, this is a, a couple of videos if you want to check them out, even if you're not really into bikers and stuff like that. Um, some of you, if you've been following things on Facebook, um, there's a guy called Everride Org, and he made a video that his bike got stolen. Well, it wasn't exactly so much that his bike got stolen as he had a couple of friends of his with a kind of weird sense of humor like a lot of his bikers have, and they even got his wife in on this kind of uh, gig like this. But if you want to check it out, I'll put, you, I'll put first the link to his uh, video where he talks about his bike getting stolen, and then I'll put the second video up, which is from Mr. Da Factor, a uh, friend of his and some other friends got together. But uh, if you've ever seen those shows like Pump My Ride where the buddies get together and uh, steal a vehicle with the wife or the girlfriend helping and everything like that, you'll kind of like this. And this is not done yet. This is still a continuing series. So uh, how it's going to pan out and how everything is going to conclude is still yet to be uh, figured out. But as of this time right now, uh, he realizes now that his bike was not stolen, that his buddies in on it, but uh, it gave him probably a little bit to be concerned about for a little while, and it is just, it's it's humorous, and I'm thinking it's going to develop into really uh, a quite decent story, so if you get a chance, check that out. They're going to pimp his ride. Well, I don't know what they mean by pimp his ride, but it'll be interesting to see what they do to it. So anyway, that's enough for this week. You guys take care. I will catch you next week.